already are fixing the pipes. We are washing the pipes, and now we are doing the beautiful. So yeah, and um, now you can see what Daddy are doing. Mm -hmm. You've also been cleaning your bike, eh? yeah. I also have doing my bike, and it's shiny and it's over there in the garage. Okay, and uh, is it good? Yeah, good place to clean bikes. Yeah, we were looking. <laughs> yeah. Some hotels don't really have space to clean bikes, but here they do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Saturday, eighth of September. I'm just. Uh, Spent the morning washing the bikes, so they're all nice and clean, like new again. So, uh, I'm ready to pack in boxes next week for the flight. Now, uh, let's go for a little walk, have a walk around Karakol, see what uh, there is to see here. But the most important place we have to see first is the um, I think it's called Fat Cafe Cake Shop, so that's where we're going first. That's very important. Okay, let's go. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Also, we are seeing a kind of mosque, oh, a special mosque today. So they don't have nail. How do you say? Nails. So, nails in the building. So that is just made out of wood or kind of things, mm -hmm. but no nails. Yeah. yeah. Made by Chinese people. So yeah, have a look at that. But the first, most important thing is the cake shop. <laughs> Okay, so this is Fat Cat Caracol, a place we've heard a lot about in the whole of Central Asia. So now we're here, let's go and see what it's like in here. So Fat Cat here, this is also another place run as a social enterprise. And they try and help the community, different projects they're working on I can see. One of them's done. So yeah, great place. It's in the winter, you sit inside, it's not so big, but uh, in the summer it's open here, outside. Uh, in Europe, this is something you take for granted. You can get it just about everywhere, <laughs> in every shop, in every corner, petrol station, nearly just about <laughs> in Central Asia. This is extremely rare to find cappuccino and a piece of chocolate cake. We heard so. about the coffee and cake here from... Uh, a couple uh, that was originally from the Czech Republic but now live in Almaty in Kazakhstan. They told us what one and a half weeks ago or something about this place. Yeah. <laughs> it's nicer now here. So now we're testing it. So a few practical things to do today as well. As a sightseeing, now the important thing is done, the cake eating. We just uh, changed some of our money into Kazakhstan Tinger is what they're using in Kazakhstan. And, uh, so we have some money when we cross the border. And then uh, just bought some new iPhone cables. For some reason they keep breaking. Now, a third different iPhone charger cable we're buying now. For some reason they keep breaking, not sure why. And uh, next thing is to find a place where we can have a haircut. So uh, let's see if we can find somewhere. Maybe here. Okay. Possible to get your hair cut here. As Jamie's doing there, costs uh, one pound. And they even cut you like uh, David Beckham. That lady there, if you need to. <laughs> okay, how about our haircut now in many, many countries? <laughs> this is probably the cheapest. One pound for this job, two pounds for mine. <laughs> so, that's cheap. So, uh, very good. Now we're ready now for the next two countries. So, uh, yeah. Okay, let's do a bit of sightseeing. Let's go. <laughs> Central Asia, we've seen many times that um, the same kind of shop is in the same street. And here in this street, there's many hairdressers, probably 20 hairdressers just in this street for some reason. But we've seen that many places. Then it's lamp shops in one street, and then there's like electronic shops in one street, and here's hairdressers all in one street. So, it's very different to what we know. Mm. Uh, and another thing is uh, the Dutch lady that was uh, running the hotel that we was in a few days ago, she was telling that the locals there, they all grow uh, raspberries in their, in their garden. And they all sell it up in the street, of course, at the same time of the year when they're ready to eat the berries, so they can only earn like very little on it. So 
or she has an idea that she wants to try and help them to they can um, preserve the berries and sell them different times of the year to get the price up and not just sell them the same place but maybe or take them into a bigger town or something like that mm. because they don't earn a lot of money of course yeah everybody sells the same at a very low price they have to compete with each other yeah. the neighbors have to sell the same thing to the next door neighbor yeah. And compete instead of pooling them all together and taking them to Bishkek and getting a higher price for the whole street. Or preserving them so you yeah. can sell them later in the yes. year. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's true. We've seen this many places now. Also, one thing that uh, Karakol is used for is used as a base for um, people using the mountains, and there's some pretty huge mountains behind the uh, Karakol called the Qinxian Mountains. They're also shared with China. Used for uh, skiing, there's a ski resort here, and also used for hiking. Pretty impressive uh, hiking routes and uh, and some impressive peaks that you can climb to the top of over there. So, yeah, Carroll College is kind of a crossroads on the Silk Road now. It uh, used to be a Russian outpost, but uh, now it's more and more used by uh, people exploring this area, backpackers and travellers. Also because now they're getting a few restaurants here and coffee shops as we saw earlier today that attracts uh, Western people. And now we're going to see a church, a Russian Orthodox church made out of wood. That's just there. So let's go and have a look at that. This is the Karakol Orthodox Church. It's actually, it's actually made out of wood. Um, there used to be a church here since 1869, which was actually made for the troops that were stationed here. It's the first church in the town. It actually got destroyed by an earthquake and then they re rebuilt it and uh, built it actually in wood in uh, 1895. This was rebuilt again. So uh, yeah, quite a interesting building. It's also been used as a warehouse and dancing school and a theatre, uh, but then later on returned as a church for the town. So let's go and uh, have a little look around. Say something to the Danish viewers. Det her træværk siger Bore. Vi får helt lyst til at blive her arbejde som frivillig og bare for at male det. Yeah. Well, what they're saying is there's some wood here. It's beautiful wood, but it's all dried out. It needs a bit of uh, care and attention. And there's some Danish products that uh, would really make this look nice. A kind of varnish uh, wood protector. <laughs> it's, uh, beautiful wood, it just needs a bit of care and attention. <laughs> okay, next thing we're seeing here is a mosque. We're going to see this is called Dungan Mosque, actually built by Chinese Muslims in the year 1910. And, uh, they came here between 1870 and 1880 just to flee the violence in uh, China at that time. So this is uh, designed by a Chinese architect. It's a different style mosque than what we've seen anywhere else. And there are three main colours, red, green and yellow. So that protects against uh, evil spirits. The yellow is for Prosperity and the green one is for happiness. Uh, there's no uh, minaret on this church though either. So let's go and have a little look. Okay, now we are seeing a site. This is a mosque and it's built about Chinese people. Okay, and the special thing with this kind of mosque is that they don't have any nails. So that means it's only built by tree but not nails. And the other thing I want to say is mommy have a when you come in here you need to take some special clothes on Merlin's that role. is the wise mommy needs to have that clothes on because yeah. this is a kind of special place yeah. let's go and have a look a religious place yeah. maybe feel stupid <laughs> this is the first time you've seen a building in this design we're going to be seeing much more of this i suppose as we get to southeast asia but this is the first time you've seen anything like this very different kind of mosque. Okay, let's go and see how they built this without nails.
Coincidence again, our friends John and Fern from England are here today, so I'm having a nice afternoon with them, talking to them and sharing where they've been and where they're going again. Great. Last time we saw them was in Pokhara. And another couple, they also on bikes, same as me, Thor Nomad. So they're traveling, one from Italy, another one from uh, Australia, they're traveling home. And their bikes are here. <laughs> Hello bikes, just like me. This is a fat cat. This is the place to come to meet other people apparently here in Karakon. So there are John and Fern from England on their way to China. <laughs> Who knows, maybe we'll see them in uh, Thailand. Oh, maybe on the road. On the road tomorrow, maybe. Okay, we'll see. That was great. <laughs> All afternoon in the coffee shop. It's more like it. Okay, now we finish with Karakan. And we have been here two days. And mainly have we have been on the cake shop. And um, yeah. And so also we have met uh, some English couples, Fran and John. And that is our new friends. Yeah, and uh, tomorrow we are going in a minibus to Almaty. So yes, see you tomorrow. Okay, good night from Caracol. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.